satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. You know, I feel like showing you this one clip from one of our old podcasts. It was from the Vadala studio. Okay. It was with Swami Mukunda Anand. So just pull it up. Sure. You'll have to put volume. And this is our copyright only. So we won't put a copyright strike. <laughs> so type Swami Mukunda Anand uh, space. And I actually always wanted to discuss this with you, but I couldn't relay the information correctly. Okay. Even on our beach visits and all. <laughs> we go. I wanted to tell you this. Right. I'd love to know what you think of this as an astrophysicist. Yeah, mm. crazy Hindu multiverse theory. This is from two years ago. Okay. To give the viewers and you some context, he is a, a spiritual guru, yoga master, hmm. uh, and one of the most well-read people of his domain that I had on the show. I see. And of... Everything we spoke to him about, I think this segment was the best. So just rewind to the top. You remember this studio? <laughs> I do, yeah. yeah. This was a fun... Mm. This was in the middle of COVID when not everyone was willing to even do in-person podcasts. I That's see. where we met for the first time. Yeah, we did, of course. Yes. Play? Show the highlights channel, the RS Clips. Subscribe, hit that bell icon. Something I've been studying a lot of lately is astrophysics which is, you know, the physics of the universe. Black holes, the stars and, and the deeper you get into astrophysics, you realize that the universe is massive. It's just incredibly large. You don't even understand how large it is. If you think it's large, just read a little bit of astrophysics and your mind will be blown away by, uh, you know, how much more mega it is than you believe it is. Since you've read the Bhagavad Gita, since you've studied it, sir, since you've uh, read all these holy scriptures, uh, does any of the holy scriptures actually talk about the universe as in, you know, outer space, what's out there? Oh yeah, extremely in great detail. So it's so fascinating, Ranveer, the Western world, about 700 years ago, only knew that the earth is flat. And they believe that the Earth is the center of the universe. That was the geocentric theory. Then it moved to the heliocentric theory that the sun is the center. And our, the scriptures in our traditions, the name they have for geography is Bhugol. The Earth is round. They knew it all the while. And they have explained in so much of detail that there are five mandals, three trilokis, seven lokas. So the first is the Chandra mandal, whose lok is Chandra lok. It is uh, rotating around the mandal called the Bhu mandal, whose lok is Bhu lok, the Earth planet. But this Bhu Mandal is also not fixed. It's rotating around the Surya Mandal, whose lok is Swar Lok. And the Antariks, the space in between, is Bhuva. So this Bhu Bhuva Swar creates one Triloki. But the Surya Mandal is also not fixed. Now this I'm telling you from these scriptures, what they have described 5,000 years ago. Mm. Pause. The Surya Mandal is also not fixed. So he's saying the sun is revolving around something. Yes. Which is center of the Milky Way galaxy. That's correct. Pause this wherever you want to explain something or you want to add a point or anything like that. Please. Sure. Surya Mandal is rotating around Parameshthi Mandal. And the Loka, the planet there is Janalok. And the Parameshthi Mandal is rotating around another Mandal, Swayambhu Mandal, whose Loka is Brahma Lok. Pause. So all this... He's saying that the center of the Milky Way galaxy, technically, if, you're, if we are doing that uh, cor corroboration mm -hmm. between uh, science and uh, dha dharma, mm -hmm. He's saying that the center of the Milky Way galaxy is also revolving around something. That does make sense. Is that... Yeah, there is something called a local cluster, which is the local cluster of galaxies. For, and, and these galaxies are all coming closer together. For example, Milky Way and Andromeda. We, these two galaxies are coming closer together. Uh, they will merge in about 1.5 billion years so, or but so. Are they rotating around something? Revolving around, around something? Yes, around a common center of mass. And no one knows what that is. Uh, we're not quite exactly sure where it is. It's so far away. It's an enormous, enormous area. And it's still just a local cluster. And he's calling that Brahma Lok. Okay. So, could it be a solar system, which uh, is also the home of Brahma? Like that, that's the... That's the way it's, it's perceived over here. Yeah. yeah. It's, so it's it's the allegorical way of putting it, you know? Fair. Yeah. Okay, play. Now, science tells us that like the sun, in the Milky Way, there are a hundred billion suns. You know, and like the Milky Way, there are a hundred billion galaxies. Which means that there are 10 to the power 22 suns approximately in this entire universe. However, now science is talking about the multiverse theory, right? That there are other universes as well. And the Vedas say, you know what? How many universes are there? All of this that you are perceiving is one universe. Like this, there are infinite universes. And each with one Shankar, one Brahma, one Vishnu. Mm. Can I tell you a little story? Sure, sir. It is said that once Brahma went to meet Lord Krishna in Dwarka. And he asked the gatekeeper, tell Sri Krishna Brahma has come to meet him. So Sri Krishna asked the gatekeeper, tell him which Brahma is he. He asked, Brahmaji was astonished. Is there any Brahma apart from me? So he tell him the four-headed Brahma, the father of the four Kumars. 
the gatekeeper said shri krishna called him in so brahma ji on coming he said bhagwan what was the meaning of your question which brahma is there any brahma apart from me so lord krishna smiled by his yoga maya he called the brahmas of innumerable universes and they were all coming and offering their pranams and our brahma ji saw that there is one brahma who's got a thousand heads <laughs> so our chaturmukhi brahma said how big will be his universe mm. and then there was one brahma who had 1 lakh heads and one brahma who had 1 crore heads mm. and one brahma who had 1 arab 1 billion heads so dekhi chaturmukhi brahma hoilo chamatkar krishna er charane asi karilo namaskar our brahma ji fell at the feet of shri krishna shri krishna said brahma ji there are infinite universes yours is the smallest that is the extent of god's creation and all of this is 1/4 of creation this is the material realm and beyond this is 3/4 which is the spiritual realm where this maya this kaal this karm cannot go so that is when we say god is great that's how great he is what's out there in the 3/4 boss hmm. what's out there in the 3/4 sir 3/4 <laughs> i i don't know so look we i we the only data we have is the observational evidence so uh, the mathematics tells us that there could be an innumerable number of universes out there yeah uh, that's what quantum mechanics one of one of the interpretations of quantum, of quantum mechanics uh, says this and the string theory landscape also tells you that there could be 10 raised to 500 other universes out there and uh, the multiverse theory in quantum mechanics the multiverse interpretation says that there could be essentially an infinite number of universes out there but obviously we are confined in this universe and we have no way of getting data from outside this universe so there is no way to prove or disprove this theory and yet mathematically it makes sense and certain interpretations of quantum mechanics also say that this could be there so i think that's the kind of leap of imagination that our ancients also had that they also imagined they also um, logically extrapolated that there could be multiple universes out there maybe an infinite number of universes maybe like ours or maybe different from ours maybe larger than ours maybe smaller than ours but that sort of thing so yeah i mean which other culture has come up with these thoughts obviously we don't have data or i don't know as far as i know we don't have data but who knows you know so that's the kind of thing i mean i have, i don't know of any other culture or any, or any other civilization that has come up with these uh, leaps of imagination and and you know that itself is it, in physics we have something called a gedanken experiment which means a thought experiment there are certain things you can't really test using physical instruments but you can test using logic and your mind's imagination and that's what you do typically when it comes to uh, thinking about how black holes work and how how things beyond uh, at the quantum domain and, and further down there work so maybe our ancients were also doing some kind of quantum uh, thought experiments and like like you say in philosophy and spirituality that there's an external universe out there and there's an there's an entire internal universe within you and to understand the external universe you have to use uh, data instruments and observations and to understand the internal universe you have to meditate and go deep within and maybe there's a there's a connection between the two and there you have the mystery of consciousness and all that which science still cannot uh, explain so yeah there's so much to unravel in this but it's it's beautiful to see what our ancients came up with and uh, they that's the legacy that we have inherited from them uh I just want to play the rest of the clip where yeah. he explains the remaining three fourth, which mm-hmm. is the spiritual realm. Okay. Yeah. It's indescribable because our words can only compare with the glories of what we see here, mm. right? Now let us say that we wish to give a comparison. We will give it with material things, and that is made by a different energy. So this material realm is made by an energy called Maya, the material energy. and we see the so much of glory in every aspect of material creation you know from the tiniest higgs boson to the biggest galaxies to cristiano ronaldo sure <laughs> <laughs> absolutely if this glory manifesting in everyone to sachin tendulkar so now all of this is glorious imagine the glory of yoga maya when the computer revolution started one college boy came up to me and said swami ji what computer does god use to keep an account of our karmas So I said, you know, computer is made by the material energy, and God has a superior energy called Yoga Maya, by virtue of which He knows everything that we thought of from the time we were born till today, not of one lifetime but our infinite lifetimes, and not one soul but infinite souls of creation. So how does God manage to do all that? By His Yoga Maya. By that Yoga Maya, He creates His divine abode. So let it suffice to say that it is Sat Chit and Anand. It is eternal. 
full of bliss. Now, can you imagine objects made of bliss mm. and sentient consciousness? So that abode is Satchid Anand, full of divine bliss. It's for the perfected souls. That means when we reach that perfection, we will then be there. Can you become imperfect when you go there if you fail a test there? Once we are situated in knowledge, then the ignorance will not overcome us again. Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Sadaha Pashyanti Surya. It's that the soul is on a journey. You know, so in the journey, we are slowly growing, we're taking a few steps ahead, maybe a few steps back, and then again a few steps ahead. But once we reach that perfection, it means that now we are situated in knowledge. So when you have divine bliss, then why should you choose something far inferior? Yeah. <laughs> what is God, sir? God. I mean, there are so many ways of looking at God. But if you want, well, a computer, computer scientist source perspective, God is the programmer of the universe. You know, and mathematics is the language of the, of the, it's the programming language. I'll pause you. Yeah. I'll take you back to this clip now. What did you make of what he said? Just like, how did your mind perceive this? I want to, now I want to speak to the scientist in you as well as the human being. Yeah. So what he says is that we, uh, there is some, somewhere a register of our karma, right? All the actions and their merits and demerits are recorded somewhere, somewhere out there. And the soul is infinite. So we enter a physical body, we live a lifetime, we accumulate karma, positive as well as negative. It is all added to the balance book, the register. And then we pass on, we leave this material shell and we then move on to another lifetime and that sort of thing. And this happens possibly an infinite number of times. That's what he is saying. And that's what our, our culture believes. That's what our civilization believes. And, and many other cultures believe in this, in the transmigration of the soul. So there is a balance book somewhere, a register somewhere that stores all the positive and negative aspects of our actions. And, and, and that uh, is something that continues over lifetimes. So maybe there is a database somewhere or maybe the universe itself has so many atoms. I mean, you cannot even imagine how many atom, atoms we have. So maybe it is recorded somewhere out there in the, in the cosmos. And somehow somebody is keeping track of what, what uh, positive and negative merits and demerits of our actions we are accruing and maybe it's passing on throughout the lifetimes and maybe there is a point to all of this somewhere which maybe somebody as small as me would not understand but maybe there's a big grand purpose the grand scheme of things in which all of this has some actual purpose and makes sense if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip